Hi folks. So this is a condensed version of what the digital portfolio looks like. I'm going to walk you through a couple of steps, just talk you through some of the basics on how digital portfolios work. This was the original advertisement that went out. So we are going to be using Google Sites to build things. Now this is Google Sites, but you might say, Rachel, how do I get to that? This is Google. All right, in order to do this tutorial, you will need a Gmail account. As you can see up here, I'm already logged in to my Gmail account, rachelandfleming at gmail.com. You are welcome to email me. Now, how do you get to Google Sites from here? Easiest way is just to type in Google Sites. You can also go to your Google Drive folder right here and go to it through that, all right? Go to Google Sites. If you're already logged in, this is gonna take you right here. Now, I, I'm going to give you folks templates when you come to a digital portfolio workshop. However, it's not a true template because I have to add you as an editor and then make a copy of it. You have to make a copy. It's a little messy. So if you just go to Google Sites here, yours probably won't have a whole bunch of things here. I'm an open education resource librarian and we're always building things. So I have many. But if you start up here to the template gallery, this is gonna give you a lot of templates that you can build your own digital portfolio from. There's a whole bunch of different ones and I'm just gonna walk you through a version. So say you just wanna make one from scratch. You can click on any of these templates and it'll open it up. And this is gonna give you a brand new template that you get to work from. There's a couple of things to notice. Up here, right next to the icon, I would name this your name, Rachel's Portfolio. Okay, or some version of that, all right? I would also put it here because this is what's gonna show up in the tabs up here, okay? Rachel's portfolio, okay? And you'll notice, because right now it was just the, the template, once you put this in, eventually it'll change that up there in the tab, okay? And then I would also put it here in whatever your title is, Rachel's portfolio, okay? Now, once you have that going, you're gonna basically start adding in content about yourself. If you are an artist, maybe you want to do images. If you are building a resume, you might want to put in a resume. And how do we do that? The most important thing to know is that this is your toolbar over here on the right hand side. And the things you're going to need to know are all over here. Okay. Number one, this is the back end. Okay. This is your draft version. If you send a link of this to someone, it's going to send an error code. They're going to say, we don't have access to it. So when you are ready for other people to view it, you have to publish. So when you hit publish, number one, it's gonna ask you to choose a web address. Now it's always gonna say this first part, HTMS slash slash sites.google.com slash view. You can add a personal domain name later, but for now I would say put in your name and some version of it, right? So maybe portfolio, okay? And it says it's already taken. So maybe you wanna add in your Coolinga College, Coolinga College, okay? All right, something to that effect, or maybe you wanna put in West Hills Community College District, you know, something to that effect, okay? And it'll only give you ones that are free and open, and then you're gonna hit publish. Now, this means that you will have a backend, and then you can go over here, click this little thing, and do view publish site. This is your front end. This is what people are actually seeing. This is your published site. So you can see I haven't added anything in here, but that's okay. No one will be able to find it unless I send it to them anyway. And this is the link that you would actually send to people. There is, however, one more thing you need to do. So on the back end, okay, this is your draft version. You need to go up here to this little button where it says share with others. You could add other people to it if you want them to edit it. You need to make sure where it says publish site that this is a public, okay, and it's not restricted. You want public and then done. That way they'll be able to actually see it. If not, no one's gonna be able to see it. If you wanna make a copy of something, you're gonna add this and add people's Google accounts here and they will be able to edit the back end with you. So that is publishing and then to view it, view the published site and make sure, remember on the draft version, this link won't work. Only the published site link will work. This link will work. All right. So once we have that, we're really going to talk about how do we edit this. All right. Over here on the right hand side, you have insert and you have pages. Pages are all the different tabs right here. It's just like a folder. Think of each one like individual folders that you have. You can also make extra folders. So say under the about me, you want to do a cover letter section. This little plus button right here, click new page maybe put cover letter, yeah. 
And now you're going to have a cover letter. Now, right now, it's a separate page up here. But say hypothetically, you want it to be a subcategory. Just click and drag. Now it is underneath the About Me section. Say you want to add in a header. Okay. Now you have cover letter and you have a header. You can change the images very easily. You can select or upload. So say we want to select from Google Images, right? And we want something that has to do with cats. Cat. You can search for cats and you could find an image and you can insert. And now suddenly you have that as your background image. Okay. The other thing you're going to need to do now that you've gotten your pages set up is think about what you want to actually do to insert content. You can always just insert a text box. This is going to be just like typing into a Microsoft document You can type anything you want in here. And just like in a Microsoft document, you'll be able to change the title and all of the actual font. One of the best things they have also is this content blocks right here. So say you have three different pictures of yourself that you want to add in with different titles. You want to have some different examples. You can throw that in. Now I'm an artist. So sometimes I might want to throw in say under pages, I want a portfolio page specifically related to art. You could do a new page and do art portfolio. Okay. And then here we have it up here, right here an art portfolio. Click on it. You're on the art portfolio page. Click insert. And say you want to do something like a slides presentation, a similar to PowerPoint. Okay. I have some of these pre-built for you examples. Just click on it and hit insert. Now you're like, well, Rachel, I don't have anything built. All you have to do, start a new page, Google Slides. Okay. And you can make your own Google Slides presentation. So say you have a whole bunch of images of art, throw all of your images in here, just make a whole bunch of blank documents and it'll automatically show up here. Okay. When you do this, It'll automatically show up. Any slides that you have in your same Google account will show up here. As you can see, I have many. I've done lectures on information literacy. I have a photography portfolio. I have a lot of different things in here. They'll all show up under your slides. Now, you won't be able to edit it in the back end, but if you hit publish, okay, it's going to show you what you've edited, what you've changed. You hit publish, okay? And then again, you can view it on the front end. And on this end, you will be able to click through the portfolio. So this is a way that you can actually see your images or a PowerPoint, and you get to choose how big or small this is. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. You can also insert a YouTube. So say you want to do a YouTube of funny cats. Cat. You can click this and insert, and now you have a YouTube where they can watch it directly in. Okay. Say hypothetically, you want to embed a different website. You're like, you know what? I got named student of the year and I want that to be embedded. You can click here and actually add in a very specific website page. Okay, so this is going to do this as a page to the website. And now they will be able to surf through this website while still being on your page. And remember, any changes you make, you have to hit publish because you're in the back end, you're in the draft version, so it can be viewed in the front version because right now we haven't published this. So in the published version, it's only showing this. So I would have to hit publish, see the changes that I've made, okay, in the draft version and currently published, hit publish, and then view it again, view publish site, and now you will have access to it in the final version, all right? Now, what does this actually look like once it's been built out? This is an example of mine. I have a master's in library and information science. So for me, I want my homepage, this is the homepage, to be a running resume. I also have a LinkedIn. You can go to my LinkedIn account. Okay, it takes you right to my LinkedIn. All right, you can go to my Instagram and my social media. And then this is a running resume. It's got a qualification, my education, my work experience, project experience. And then I do a list of skills and each skill has demonstration. So this will take you to a page that I've built out that actually demonstrates that skill. I list my leadership skills. And then these are linked to different letters that I have. You can also see them up here. Now this has taken me quite a bit of time to build out. These are pictures of me, different ways to contact me. All right, I have a cover letter. All right. Now this is a base cover letter. When I'm applying for specific jobs, I would edit it. I also have a diversity statement. This was important for libraries. If you're an artist, you'd have an artist statement. Okay, skills demonstrated. This is again where you can see my skills demonstrated. You can actually watch me build a website with HTML and CSS. My graphic design, I just have these different skills in here. 
I also ran my own fine art business for about 12 years. So I have a whole page dedicated to my fine art and I have a website where you can actually shop and purchase my art. So that's embedded directly in, as well as here's another slideshow where you can see all my line art put together. So this is a way that you can start building out everything you do. I was also a wedding photographer for about five years, seven years. So if you wanted to go through and see my art, you can see it. Okay. And then I have an e-portfolio for a master's programs in information science. They want you to see how you do it. So say you have an English class that you want to show how you actually did this work. We did our different competencies on things. So this could be an essay. And then you can actually do evidence related to prove that you have knowledge in this very specific skill set. So this is evidence. All right. So this would be an e-portfolio. And then I also have a teaching demonstrations. So because I am an information science professional, I have lots of different guides on how to actually search things. And for me, maybe I have screenshots and then little YouTube videos with how to on how to do those things. All right. And I even have a do-it-yourself student portfolio page, which is very similar to what we have. Now, if you come to my workshops, there is the option to see a template that you can get. So this is a template that I can give to people. The problem is I cannot send you a link over email. It can only be done synchronously, face-to-face, -face, basically, over Zoom or in person. And that's because technically it's not a true template. I have to add you as an editor here, okay? And then you have to click these three dots, make a copy, and be able to make a version of this for yourself. So in the workshops, when you come, I can give you access to be an editor here. You make a copy. And then you'll go through these steps, you'll make your own version, and you will have access to what I've built out for you. So this is a blank running resume for you. Okay, and I have a whole bunch of other pages that I built out for you, an empty cover letter page with all the different content directly in it, a skills demonstrated page with something to talk about tips for a resume, a hobbies page. If you're an athlete, you might want an athlete page. Okay, and then I actually built out a portfolio for you folks as well. This has to do with things like, say you have a student development one class and an English class, and you wanted to de dedicate one page per class. This is an option for that. So when it comes to digital portfolios, you can build one from scratch, no problem, on your own. If you come to a workshop, there is a way that we can do this. If you missed a workshop, come by the West Hills Community College Kalinga Library, Library Resource Center, Monday through Friday. Ask to speak to me, and I am happy to help you build one of these, give you access on the spot. You're also welcome to reach out to me, and I can help you troubleshoot. I cannot give you access to this template, though, unless you attend one of the workshops to get credit for it. So. Again, insert and pages are the best way that you can edit things. If you hit issues, let me know. Google Sites also has tons of easy tutorials. So if you click here and go to Google Sites How To, it will give you all kinds of how to use Google Sites. All right, and it'll walk you through all the steps. So this is something that you can do. I believe in you folks. And you're welcome to contact me with any questions at Rachel Fleming 2 at West Hills Community College District.edu.